what's going on everybody we'll see how well we can do this here i'm going to do my best uh this video is about soldering <clears throat> and uh, let's see if we can't figure this out and talk about it a little bit together here pardon the noise of this goofy chair uh, i'm going to try my best to zoom in on some stuff here but uh my phone can only do so much so uh, uh let's first talk about soldering irons okay there's a few different types and uh, I have my preferences, and other people will probably have theirs, and that's okay. Everyone's got a different style. First one, 100 watt Radio Shack. Okay. Oh, see, I'm not in the damn camera there. There we go. 100 watt Radio Shack. Uh, has a light on it. You plug it in, you it'll pull the trigger. This does not get hot until you uh, pull the trigger, and then it gets hot. Um, I bought this many years ago. I don't use it. Uh, it just sort of sits here just in case or whatever, I guess. Um, <clears throat> it's an option if you're doing bigger, heavier stuff, I guess, okay? <clears throat> Next up, and I don't have the other one here. It's at my shop, but um, we'll show you this one and explain the other one. This one here uh, is a cheap one, but it works. I should have pulled this all off of there, I guess, ahead of time. But uh, let's see here. Okay, so here we are. Your basic soldering iron. Okay. Oh dang, I gotta I'm not real good at this camera stuff, you guys. So here is the basic soldering iron. It's got temperature control here, plus or minus, on or off. Uh the tips are interchangeable, replaceable. Uh just plugs in, uses this holder here, and uh comes with a sponge. You wet the sponge down to pull the extra solder off, etc. etc. Okay, we'll cover a little bit more of that after a while, all right? But um, I just want to go over the products here first so uh, everyone kind of knows what's what and uh, what your options are. Now, the other one like this that I've got does not have temperature control. It's just on and off. It's one heat setting. Um, it's good in a pinch, but you want to be able to regulate the heat because if you cannot regulate the heat, you're going to start to melt things, burn things up, uh, traces on your circuit boards, or um, perhaps even uh, the plastic on these mic plugs and things. Okay, you don't want to melt that because then they're not going to stay in there real good. Okay, um, but we'll cover that in a little bit here too. All right, so next thing I want to address is solder and flux. Very, very, very important. It's the most important part of the whole deal. So right here, we've got acid core wire solder, okay? And here we've got lead-free tinning flux, all right? Both of these have no business. They do not belong anywhere near a um, electronics. This is for copper pipe. And the like. Now, if you look in here, I don't know if you can see, I've got some shiny stuff in there, and there's some dull stuff here. This lead stuff, it's probably junk already. Um, but uh, this is for copper pipes and stuff. Uh, the acid core will eat away at your electronics, and it will ruin them. Uh, so make sure when you go buy solder that you get the right stuff. Uh, you don't want that stuff for any part of this, okay? Um, this was a solder that... Uh, I've used for a long time. I've been through a couple rolls of this stuff already. Uh, it's 6337, um, tin, and uh, whatever else. It's supposed to be a lead-free. It says rosin core solder, and that's fine, but um, the rosin in here really isn't worth shit. Uh, pardon my language, but it's really not, uh, not the best thing. Uh, none of them are, in my opinion, and I'll show you why here after a while. Okay, so we've got that solder. Uh, this stuff here, I don't think I've ever used it. Uh, this one has 20% flux in it. Super wire solder. It uh, came with uh, this other soldering iron over here. Uh, the nice digital one there. And uh, this stuff is okay in a pinch. It's nice and thin for doing uh, small detail work, I guess. But uh, the stuff that I like to use the most uh, is this stuff right here super solder wire i get this from uh, tony over at ica uh thanks to bbi he made a post a while back 
uh, pointing this solder out, and I grabbed some because he said it worked really good, and uh, it does. I think it's freaking fabulous. Uh, so this is the main stuff I use. It's not the cheapest, but uh, it works real good, right? 60% lead, I believe, is in there. They don't tell you because of the laws with lead out here these days, but um, uh, this is stuff I like. It's a little thicker, heavier. Um, now, that's the other thing, too. If you've got something that, uh, let's say you wound up with solder this thin, all right, this nice thin stuff here, which is good for electronics and things, but um, you got something to solder that's heavier and you need a lot of solder. Well, you can take a bunch of this, make like 12, 15 foot lengths of it, twist it together on one end, put it in a pliers or something, stick it in your drill and twist it. And uh, you'll have thicker wire that you can use, thicker solder that you can use for uh, heavier stuff. But uh, I like this thicker stuff regardless. And uh, so, yeah, anyways. Okay. Um, well, I did not pull that part out either. I'm going to pause here for a minute, you guys. All right, we're back. So here's what the solder looks like uh, when you put it in a drill. Now, I just took it and I looped it. Hopefully you see it there. And then I just twisted it in the drill. Okay, that's what it looks like. And now look at how thick that is for feeding a lot of solder faster, right? <clears throat> um, you know, you might want to try to use it for uh, coax or uh, uh, heavy gauge wire, something like that maybe. Uh, I I twisted this up a long time ago, and I still haven't had the need to use it. Uh, doesn't mean I won't, and why why throw it away, right? So we got that sitting there. All right, next thing is going to be tip tinner, okay? Tip tinner. This is, and I'll demonstrate it in a little bit here. This is to tin the tip of your soldering iron, right? So you get a brand new soldering iron, you got your tips here. Uh, these have already been used. I could probably pull out some ones that haven't, but um, uh, they have no solder, no nothing on them. And they will not take solder. They will not accept solder unless they've been properly tinned, uh, which is part of the problem with a lot of people is uh, tinning. Tinning is is probably uh, just as important as the flux is, okay? So, well, here's an example, I guess, uh, which I'll cover this in a second, too, now that we're over talking about tips here a little bit. So... Here's just one of them. This is copper. Uh, we'll discuss that in a minute. Uh, there's no tin on this at all. This won't want to accept solder. Uh, it won't uh, work very well for you until it's tinned. All right, so we'll cover that too. But um, uh, yeah, all these procedures are important. Uh, it's not just heat it, melt it, and it should stick. That's not how it works, all right? Uh, wick. Uh, whatever you call it, it's solder wick, all right? It's just a copper braid, all right? What this is for is pulling excess solder off. So you set this down onto whatever you want to desolder. You heat it up. You pull it off before it cools. Pull it off the thing, and the solder will wick to this and pull the solder away, all right? Because a lot of times we try to re-solder with old crappy solder on there, and it ain't no good. I prefer that over the solder sucker. Okay, I've got one. It's a pain in the butt. Basically, it works on a vacuum. You push the button there, see, and it'll suck the solder out. All right. Um, you need three hands most of the time for these, so I don't uh, particularly uh, use this a whole lot. Um, flux. Flux, flux, flux. Most important part of the whole thing, uh, bar none. Okay. So there's this flux that I got, and it's pretty funky, all right? Uh, it's been well used. It's uh, So you can see what I'm using there. Uh, this stuff is okay. You can kind of use this stuff for tinning the tip and whatever a little bit too if you want, but it's a hard paste. See, it's hard. So you really can't use it unless you melt it and try to put it onto something. So I don't care for this stuff too much. What I like to use is right here. Radio Shack, okay? I've had a tube of this stuff that still sits out at my shop that um, uh, I use it all the time. This is the only one I use. This one here, and I'll demonstrate all this stuff too. I just want to go over the products first. It's like a jelly, okay? And uh, this means you can put it on anything. And um, this stuff here uh, will make a soldering god out of just about anybody, okay? 
So what we're going to do next here is probably demonstrate some soldering um, and how to use these products. All right, so let me turn this soldering iron on. We're going to use this one over here, okay? I'll turn the camera over there a little bit more uh, for a minute here. Let's see. Yeah, okay. So uh, the way it works, you've got uh, your temperature up, down, okay? Let me just wait till it gets up to temp there. It gets up to temp real fast, all right? You see there we're at 370 Celsius, all right? On, off is down here. This is the soldering iron, okay? Replaceable tip. So that's a nice little holder here. This side here, I'm not going to pull it out because, well, I can pull it out, I guess. There's a safety switch in here. Uh, this is a heat gun. Uh, it has different tips that go in there. So you can use it for your shrink tubing or for um, uh, your surface mount stuff. If you want to do surface mount stuff, I do not have any. There's a special paste that you use, and you use this one, okay? Now, when you turn this on, it stays on for a while, and uh, you got to set it in a holder for it to stop running, all right? Uh, and here are the buttons, up, down, uh, for temperature. This here dial is for the amount of airflow that comes out of here. So you still got the temperature up, down, and you can say if you want to blow real light, turn it down. You want to blow heavy, turn it up. I only use that for heat shrink tubing, but... Um, 370 degrees Celsius is generally where I solder most everything. Is it too hot? Maybe a little bit, but I'm not there long enough for it to matter, okay? So um, let's see here. I got my little chart here. 370 is, yeah, see, it's a little hot. It's about 670 degrees, give or take. Uh, it's probably hot because solder doesn't need that much usually, but um, it works for me. You're going to have to figure out for yourself what... Um, what temperature works best for you, okay? Um, and here's why. Not every solder has the same melting point. Not every item you're going to solder uh, is the same thickness. Thicker wire, thicker um, things are going to require more heat. So you're going to want to change it a little bit. Now, when you've got this thing sitting here like this, it's going to start to turn black and char and whatever, okay? So... That's where tip tinner comes in. See if I'm still in focus here. Yeah, I'm in focus. Okay, great. So you use this stuff with a new tip or when it gets like that if you want to. Basically, you just take it, set it in there, melt it around. There's uh, the flux and stuff in here and basically solder it. Look at how shiny that is now. I think you guys can see that in there. Shines it right up, tins it right up. Now it's good to go. When it's dull and funky looking... Um, that is no bueno. That's uh, dirt and slag and um, uh, whatever else that uh, is not conducive to soldering. Clean is the name of the game. Everything should be nice and clean. All right. So uh, that's what the flux does. Okay. I should go over that too. And sorry if this video is kind of jumbled up. I, uh, I'm not always the best at this stuff, but uh, flux. What the flux does is it cleans the material. Uh, whatever you're going to use. You can't see it on there always, but there will be like a dull finish on the solder, okay, or on the wire, or your mic plug. There will be a dull contaminating finish on there. This etches and cleans the metal, removes the oxygen from the area to a degree, and makes everything wet so it flows. So if you don't use this stuff, and I'll try to demonstrate it. Actually, I could probably do that right now. So let's just take this razor blade, for example, all right? Let's just say I try to uh, put some solder on there. And the way I like to do it is I like to put the solder on the soldering iron. Get a little ball of it on there, right? Now I'm going to try to solder it here. It won't stick, see? I can't do anything to make that sucker stick on there. It's getting funky on the soldering iron, but it won't stick to here. It falls right off, okay? And I don't know if you can see it back there. I've got... Um, uh, the sponge, not the sponge, but the uh, steel wool. Let's see here, right back there. Um, steel wool, it's, well, it's not steel wool. It's like a brass or a copper or whatever. Uh, but that works better for me than the sponge, the wetted sponge. Uh, wetted sponge is fine for minor stuff or whatever. But now, let's use a little bit of flux and see what happens here. We'll do this together because I've never tried to solder a razor blade. Take a little dab of the flux there. 
get it on there a little bit and you don't want to breathe this stuff in if you can help it right uh it's it's not it's nothing nice so uh try to be in a ventilated area if you can as well um and uh let's see if we can solder that now we're going to cover some tips a little bit more here all right so let's get a little bit of solder on there the flux is starting to move away I'm not confident this is going to work. Okay, see how it, it beat it up on there? That is not a good solder. Okay, that is not at all a good solder. Um, it uh, Well, it might be halfway decent. Let's check here for fun. Okay, so I was wrong. My apologies. Uh, that is a good solder joint. There's just a lot of it there, and the razor blade wasn't hot enough. So that's why it's balled up on there versus flowing because the the metal wasn't hot enough okay but i made it stick right i cannot get that sucker off of there all because i used flux now when i didn't use flux it would not stick right so that that ain't going to come off of there unless um i need to use like some solder braid okay let's say i want to take that off of there all right clean my soldering iron off a little bit Hopefully this is in the video there yet. I think so. It's hard, so hard to tell. So we'll take this braid. We'll set it on there. We'll heat that sucker up a little bit. Now see how it's pulling off onto the, the copper there? We will slowly, slowly take that off of there. Now that's a lot of solder, obviously. But um, see how we're getting that off of there. All right. Then this is trash, obviously. You just snip that sucker off, toss it in the garbage, when it's cooled, of course, and you keep going. This stuff ain't that expensive either on Amazon. It's a great thing to have, great tool to have. And uh, so as you can see now, the solder did start to flow down a little more when I got more heat on there, and um, but I removed a bunch of it as well, okay? So now the next step is all this flux that's on there. You do not want to leave that flux on there. Uh, it's just not a good idea. So what I use, I get the 99%. It really doesn't matter. Um, isopropyl alcohol, okay? And what I do is I got it in a little spray bottle here. I'll take a Q-tip usually. I'll just spray it down a bunch here and um, wipe it clean. Okay, sometimes you can use a rag. This stuff is very, very aggressive, very sticky. Uh, it takes quite a bit to wet it down good, um, but it does clean it very well, and you want to get all that off of there. I don't know if I stayed in the camera focus the whole time there, but uh, see there, all that extra flux came off of there. You take the other side, dry it if you want. Um, and the reason I use the razor blade is not because I'm, uh, you know, don't have the right stuff here. I want to point out that anything can be soldered, damn near, you know, any type of metal. So that's a pretty good solder joint there. Uh, it's nice and shiny. If you've got the right solder, it will be shiny. Some people will say, uh, if the solder is dull when you're done, it's because you didn't solder right. It's a cold solder joint. Um, that is true with lead solder. If you're able to have true lead solder, uh, that is true. But now this stuff here that's uh, tin and zinc, uh, that's what that is there. I don't know if you can see it through there, but uh, uh, remember before I said it was tin and whatever. It's an alloy, basically. 63% tin, 37% zinc, I do believe. Uh, this stuff will give you a dull finish uh, when you solder with it. You will have a dull finish. So don't be too alarmed by that. It just depends on uh, the type of solder you're trying to use. All right. So now if I was to use this flux... What I would have to do, or what I used to do, is I would take this and I would melt a bunch of it. Get a nice puddle of liquid. See how it's turning liquid there? I get a nice puddle of liquid. Then I take that and I dab it on there. And then I smear it to whatever I'm going to smear it to, to be able to use it. Okay, now I got my flux on there. My flux is etching and cleaning that metal and doing everything a flux should do. It works, but it doesn't work nearly as well as the Radio Shack stuff does. 
Um, I strongly recommend anyone who's going to solder, get the Radio Shack stuff. Uh, don't mess around with this stuff in the extra step. I just, I got it and I don't throw it away. You know, it's there if I need it, right? Um, so you want to tin some wires. We talked about pre-tinning and some people said, oh, well, what's pre-tinning? So pre-tinning is when you put some flux on your wire or your mic plug, let's say. See how those got solder on them already? That's pre-tinning, okay? You want to put flux and solder on both sides before you solder them. Now, when you put them together, it takes minimal heat because you've already cleaned and penetrated everything um, ahead of time, right? So, and by the way, this soldering iron has an auto shutoff on it. Sorry about me bumping the camera there, but uh, it has an auto shutoff. When it's on for so long, it will shut itself off till it sees motion and whatnot. All right, so you got this wire here, right? It's real thin. These strippers, uh, maybe they don't go small enough or you keep stretching wire off of there and you want every strand you can get because it's already thin wire, right? Here's how you strip the wires, especially like for your mic cords and stuff. Take your knife. It's not real sharp, okay? I, I you know, I can go like this and I don't cut myself, all right? Uh, you don't want to use a razor blade or anything real sharp. All I do I set it down on there like so on my thumb, and I roll that wire. I just kind of roll it and press a little bit. Just kind of score the wire. Okay, so you know I scored it all the way around without cutting the wire. You get in there a little bit with your fingernail and pull. Not a single strand left behind. Oh, there we go. Not a single strand left behind. It's all right here. Okay, all right there. And then you twist that up. Some guys say you shouldn't or whatever. I like to twist mine. So if I get wild solder uh, or a, a wire somewhere, it's not going to stick out and accidentally short out, right? So there you go. You got that. Now, solder is not going to want to stick to this because it's dirty, okay? It's not clean. Uh, not at all. Uh, your solder isn't even clean, all right? I mean, it sits here and gets dirty like I showed you with that acid core stuff. I'm going to use this one because it's a little easier to control. And... Um, Let's see here. Let's put a little bit of solder on there. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see there. Okay, so it's it's sticking, but it's not really sticking, okay? It's kind of sitting on the outside of the wire, okay? So now if I take this, I'll clean this back off. In fact, I'm just going to strip this off and start again, uh, just so you all can see the difference. Okay, so there again, we take this sucker, am I in there? Yep. We roll it a little bit, just kind of push down. Just score the plastic a little bit there. You can see it. It's scored. It's not really cut through. Pull it off. Twist it up. All right now, we're going to take this wire. I should just leave this open. And we're just going to get a little bit of flux on there. Okay, just a little, you don't need a lot. You kind of put it in there, wipe off the excess, just a thin little coating. Now, always clean your tip right away after every time, too. Uh, keep it nice and clean like that. And the older your um, uh, your brass uh, wool gets, or whatever you want to call it, um, the better it'll work because there's solder in there. And look at how it's discoloring already uh, from the heat. I've probably got the heat up too high. I think I was doing coax or something with this last time, but whatever. Okay, see, I cleaned it right back up, right? So now we're going to take a drop of solder. Let's see if I'm in focus there. I'm going to set that on there. Now look at how nice and shiny it did that. Uh, the uh, solder wicked right into the wire. That whole wire is now solid and protected. Uh, you know, you can't even bend it. It actually started to creep up behind the insulation a little bit there. Okay, so that is all tinned up real good. It didn't do that without the flux. That's why I love this flux so much, okay? Now, there's times where I might dip this back into flux. Like if I was going to solder that to here, I'm going to put a drop of flux. I might take a toothpick here, um, put a little drop of flux on here. Not a lot, don't need a lot. Uh, maybe a little bit on the wire again just because of the contamination as it dried or whatever. It doesn't hurt to use the flux. Uh, it's going to help you more than it's going to hurt you every time, guaranteed. All right. And I know you'll see guys soldering the builders and different things, and they just grab the solder and they use it. And uh, that's fine. Uh, 
that might work for heavier duty stuff. For me personally, I have never been able to um, get as good of a solder joint as I do with this stuff. And uh, especially on my cards and things that are being abused, uh, that's what the way we like to do it. So we're going to see here if uh, I can keep you guys in focus while I do this stuff down here on the bench. I'm just going to grab a vice grips right quick here, good old Harbor Freight, you know. And uh, see if we can't, uh, that way we don't have to refocus the camera and whatnot, right? Okay, so we're going to turn that so you all can see it. There we go. This is an old crappy one anyways, right? Uh, just for this demonstration. So now, theoretically, you don't even have to get more solder. You've got solder on both sides, even though I picked one that wasn't. Hold it on there. See how it smokes up? It flowed. Whoop. See, it's turning on me because this plug is wore out. Get it warmed up. It was only there for a couple of seconds, right? Let it cool. Make sure you stay on there and let it cool first. If you try to pull it away while it's hot, it ain't going to solder. So look at how quick and easy that went. Look at how well that's soldered. Okay, there's a little discoloring there because of the flux. Now, I'll go ahead and clean that flux off, but you can tug on that son of a bitch. It ain't going nowhere. Uh, it was on there for, what, three seconds, if that? And uh, that's, the, that's the most important part, flux and tinning. Flux and tinning uh, will give you that great joint. And... Uh, I would normally put a little bit more solder on there, yet that's why I would still use a drop of solder. Uh, but there ain't nothing wrong with that. Um, but if I did, if I was doing it for myself, yes, I would. Uh, just because it's uh, how picky I am, I guess. Uh, the other thing is the difference between this solder and, say, this Mayhem solder is uh, when you use this solder, the stuff I got from Fat Boy. It's going to flow real smooth like this, okay? When you go to use the, the mayhem solder and you go to pull away, I know that's a piece of wire, but it's going to leave little spikes like that when you pull it away because of the way it melts differently, all right? And um, uh, it's not a big deal if it does that. What I usually do is just take a cutter, a little snipper, and I snip those little spurs off. You don't want to leave them spurs on because you don't want it to accidentally bridge over and short out your mic plug or short out uh, uh, your circuit board or whatever if stuff gets jostled around. You don't want any part of any of that, all right? So that's the basics. Tin it, tin the wire, tin your part, a little bit of solder on the solder gun, put the two together, hold it, you're done, all right? Uh, real simple, real basic. If I wanted to desolder that, obviously I'd use a little bit of soldering brain. Heat it up, pull it off, and I can take it apart. All right, so uh, that's it in a nutshell. I'm going to go into one other small thing that uh, most people don't have, don't do. I don't have one. I have no use for one, really. Uh, I do, but I don't. It's maybe down, excuse me, maybe down the road I'll get one just because. But um, crucible, okay, a crucible is a little cup. You get bars of solder, and you put it in here, and you melt it. So when it's melted, you can just dip your stuff in it and solder it. Like if you wanted to, um, I don't have any. Yeah, I do. Uh, and a roll of it right here. You got your uh, grounding braid, okay? I just buy it by the foot. No eyelets or nothing on it. Uh, it's copper, tinned copper, right? So it's double-sided or whatever there. Uh, I want to put this, say, in my vehicle, and I want to put a screw through there. This stuff's going to spread apart and act a fool. So you would take this and you would dip this in the crucible to tin it. Then you can put a hole in it. You can put the hole in it first, too, if you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, make sure the hole is in it the size you want it. You don't need eyelets or anything. You just screw it down and you're done. Uh, but this would be very difficult to do with a soldering iron like that. Right? So uh, that's where a crucible comes in. Now, I have made my own um, rigged crucible for wire okay so let's say uh i want to do an anderson clip let's see if i can find it there we go all right let's pull this up so i got my little 50 amp i think these are anderson clips right i got my eight gauge wire i got to solder eight gauge wire to this all right and then you stick it in here then these two plug together most of y'all know how these work right and uh 
you will never get enough heat on this sucker to solder it properly. So what I do is I take some of my flux, I put some flux in the inside there, then uh, I take my solder, I set this up usually like in a clamp or a vise or something, and I take my mini torch. Uh, eight, ten bucks last time I checked at Harbor Freight. Little mini torch, they're refillable. Uh, I don't know if this one will light. There we go, see? And I'll just use this to um, heat this up. This will have flux in there. I'll feed it wire till it's about halfway full, all right? Once it's about halfway full, I take my 8-gauge stripped wire carefully because some of it's going to try to spill out, and I just drop it in there. Once it's in there all the way, I remove the torch and let it cool. And by that point, this whole thing is filled right to the top with solder. Um, you've uh, taken the oxygen out of it so no corrosion is going to happen, uh, assuming everyone's using OFC wire, oxygen-free copper, uh, which is the best use so you don't get the green corrosion and stuff inside. Um, that's how you solder these suckers, okay? And obviously, if anyone has questions or I skipped or missed something... Uh, let me know in the comments. I'll try to make sure the comments are on. Um, but here's what I did. I took one of those. And the reason it's all dirty and funky, this is my little mini makeshift crucible. Okay? I'll put this in a clamp. Uh, so let's say I'm going to do the other Anderson clips, and I might be using 10-gauge wire. Okay? I've got smaller ones around here somewhere. Uh, I'm not going to... Oh, here. I got a whole freaking pack of them here all right so these are the little 30 ampers you put them together whatever i use these on my rig runner all my power wires have these uh, you put the clip in there they slide together here and uh i'm not sure if i got facing the right way that might be so you click it you slide it now you can never reverse polarity it can only plug in one way plug it in done i solder this to every power wire i own all right, but I want to get that wire soldered into, say, one of these smaller ones here. All right. I can use that crucible to tin the wire ahead of time because um, it's a heavier wire, okay? Uh, so you saw me tin the, the thinner stuff with just a soldering iron. But you've got 10-gauge uh, wire or something. 10-gauge won't quite fit in here, I don't think. Uh, whatever the normal gauge wire is, I think it's uh, 12 or something uh, for your power cords for like your Galaxies and 148s and things. Um, they're hard to tin with an iron like this one here because it takes a lot of heat. By the time you get enough heat there, your insulation is melting back. Okay, so I will pre-tin um, those heavier wires using this as my crucible. I just set this in there, I heat it up just like we showed you with the other one, dip the wire in. The only difference is I leave the heat on there uh, while the wire is in there, pull it out before it can cool. The wire is tinned and whatever solder and flux is in there I can use towards the next time. So then once the wire is tinned, I will take this piece and I will dip this or usually I just kind of scoop a little bit out and I get some of this flux down inside there. Then I put this in the clamp I got my clamp over here. I don't know if you can see it on camera. I don't think so. But uh, I got my clamp over there. I hold it there. I uh, stick the wire down inside. I set the soldering iron on the side of here. And I feed it just a little bit more solder. Just till I start to see it ooze out the bottom down there. I never crimp anything either. I'm, I'm not a crimper. I don't like crimping. Um, I like solder because it's a solid connection. Uh, pulls the oxygen away from it so it can't corrode and things. Uh, crimp connections I feel like can come loose. Uh, so that, and you can totally, if you can get enough heat from your soldering iron, you can uh, pre-tin your wire the way we did this green one here and slide it in there, heat it up, and do your thing. Uh, it's all up to you. But um, I prefer to have everything pre-tin that way and keep heat in mind. Um, even when I'm doing uh, like a power upgrade on an amplifier or something. Same thing. Uh, I put a little bit of flux down. Uh, 
because then it, it flows better without as much heat. You can get the heat back off of it right away. Um, uh, I want to talk about solder tips. All right, I'm going to turn this off for now, I think. Soldering tips. So I bought this soldering iron uh, because I wanted something nicer I could control temperature with better than uh, this one that I showed you earlier, okay, with the, with the couple there or whatever. This one did okay. Right, but I was going through the tips, it was chewing them up, too much heat, yada yada. And I want something a little bit nicer. So I got this soldering iron, and uh lo and behold, this one would not solder anything. I had that cranked all the way up to uh what does it go up to here? It goes up to uh eight hundred and ninety-six degrees. I had that sucker all the way up to almost nine hundred degrees, and it would not solder. It was not hot enough. And I'm racking my brain, I'm like, well. How come this other soldering iron solders at a much lower temperature? Well, I took the tips and I swapped the tips out. Suddenly, this soldering iron would solder good, and this one here would not. Well, what's going on there, guys, is um, the metallurgy in these tips. Okay, We all know that copper conducts better than aluminum. Uh, aluminum conducts better than steel. Gold conducts better than all of it, right? So the composite that some of these companies are making these tips from uh, is not very good. Uh, they do not conduct the heat properly. And so even though the iron was producing it, these tips would not freaking produce it. Sorry, I'm trying to watch my language. Uh, so what I did was I went on Amazon and I got copper, copper tips, right? They're cheap. I think there's a pack of six or seven, eight of them or something. For like eight bucks or whatever. Uh, they're solid copper. All copper. And uh, these conduct heat like crazy. They work great. Uh, and of course they come in different. Let me pull them all out here. I'm sure the plastic will put a reflection in there. Uh, you know, you got a real fine tip one here. Like if you wanted to maybe try to do some surface mount stuff or something, I guess. If you're going to remove one, maybe. Um... This one here, obviously, is for more like uh, wires on a board. Um, you know, there's a couple more different sizes. Basically, what it comes down to is surface tension, right? So if I try to, let's say I want to solder this with this, that little tip is not going to give you much heat because it's tiny. It's not going to transfer a lot. But now I take something like this sucker here and put that on there. I've got more surface area. That thing's going to get a lot hotter a lot faster. Um, that's the name of the game with soldering is you want it to heat up quick and get out quick. Uh, but you want to make sure that it flows. Uh, like I showed you earlier with the razor blade when it didn't flow and then when it did, uh, that's what you're looking for. You want it to lay down and flow. And the flux will make it wet and cleans everything from oxides and contaminants to be able to do so. Uh, and that's why there again, I recommend this Radio Shack stuff. Uh, they got a website. Radio Shack has a website running where you can order this stuff. Uh, part number six four zero zero. I think. Well, let me see here. One two three. Yeah, six four zero 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 two two is the part number. Okay. Type that in. Type in. Look for this flux. Get you a thing of this flux. One tube of this flux will last you for a very long time. Uh, and they're getting just a little drop on something is all you need. Uh, I like to use a little bit more. <clears throat> I use it on my coax. So I don't want to go too far into coax. Uh, but, um, wrong well, they, well, anyways, uh, the, the regular uh, PL 259s, I got the four holes around them. Uh, if you're wanting to use that type of coax, pre tin that braid also. Pre tin that braid when you put that in there. And you can solder with this stuff right here and solder those much better because you heated up the wire separately. You're not trying to heat the wire and the PL259 and get the solder in there and all that. It'll work much better. Um, the other thing I had happen to me, um, and I'm not going to have one. I'll use this as an example, I guess. I don't know where all my connectors are at the moment, but... Uh, so this end here is normally soldered on a regular PL259. Okay, if I take and I try to solder that with just the solder, just the solder and the soldering iron, 
because there's flux in here, right? There's flux. It says so. It says 2% flux or whatever, right? Uh, not enough. That solder will sit right at the end here and not want to go in there and penetrate anything. You'll basically have a cold solder joint. You, I, what I do is I take the um, conductor of the coax and I put some flux right on it. I slide it in there, make sure it's hanging out all the way, maybe snipped a little end off or whatever. I don't put it like this so the solder drips down in there and shorts out to the braid, okay? I leave it up like this at this angle, and uh, I heat it up and put the solder on there. That solder will crawl uphill and fill this whole thing up inside there, all the way up to here, with solder, and give you a solid joint for your coax, and it will never come loose. Well, I shouldn't say never, but pretty much never, right? So, uh... That's pretty much the gist of it. I do think I can make a supplementary video if somebody needs one. Um, but uh, I showed you how to strip the wire. Uh, showed you how important flux is. Showed you how to tin your tip. Brand new tips, the same thing. Dip it in there, stick around. You could probably, a lot of people, what they'll use instead of the tip tinner is they'll use some flux, like uh, this stuff here probably. And you just coat it with a little bit of solder. You put a little bit of solder on there, some flux, whatever. And you want to coat that tip because keeping the solder on that tip keeps the oxidation off of it. Uh, because oxidation does not transfer heat. That's why it's important to keep this clean. And that's why I say dip it in there every time. It's off now, so it ain't uh, clean. But um, uh, this oxide here, it's a little warm yet. Oh, and always double check to make sure this sucker's tight because they hot, cold, hot, cold, they like to loosen up a little bit. Sorry, I keep bumping the damn camera. But see how this has all this oxide on there now from cooling down? That is all contamination. And this will not transfer heat properly. So you have to clean this to transfer the heat properly. So you tin it, clean it, whatever. Uh, make sure that's clean. Your flux cleans what you're going to solder to. And it cleans your solder. Because your solder's sitting here, it's all contaminated. Just like I showed you earlier, I can... Maybe pull this out a little bit so you can see better. God, I should almost throw this stuff away. Hey, so looky here. See see how cruddy and oxidized that sucker is? Now look at where it hasn't been in the air so much. It's nice and shiny in there. All right? So this shiny stuff will work way better than this crappy stuff right here. Uh, it is what it is. But lead solder, you guys don't want to be messing with lead solder like this anyways. If you do, wash your hands afterwards and stuff. Because uh, eating, smoking, all that type of stuff will give you uh, what California says anyway is lead poisoning. But um, uh, so be careful with the lead. Uh, I think some of the solder probably has lead. I think the stuff from Fat Boy has lead in it. Uh, but that's why, you know, you'll see me when I get off of here. I'll go wash my hands. You know, I don't put them near my mouth or anything. You know, if you really want to, you can even clean them up a little bit there or whatever. But um, uh, hopefully that uh, that covers just about everything. Alcohol to clean the flux, good quality flux, tin your iron, tin your wire, tin whatever you're going to work on, tin, 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 tin man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, look at how good that flowed. I, you'll probably never see another video where somebody was able to solder a razor blade, right? Uh, <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to point it out that um, a lot of materials don't want to accept solder and people have trouble with globs. It doesn't want to stick. It doesn't want to hold. This right here is the main reason why. Flux. It's not all about the heat. It's about the flux. Um, flux and then obviously clean off, like I said. And I think I'm starting to repeat myself. So uh, with that being said, I think I'm going to end this video. Hopefully that uh, takes care of everything. I've had people ask me how to strip the wires. That's why I showed that. Because uh, it can be pretty challenging to try to strip the wires without cutting through. Uh, but that technique works very good for me. Um, now, when I do coax, I use the razor blade instead, the other part of the coax. I set it on there, and I lightly roll it around and score it a little at a time. Maybe give it a little relief in there and cut it. Uh, I do that very carefully. And, um, yeah. And then uh, for doing the, the cutting of the coax, I went and got one of these at Harbor Freight. Because uh, it's rounded in here. So it doesn't crunch the coax. It keeps it round yet. Makes it easier to fit in the... Uh, so or the PL259. Uh, I get a lot of my stuff from Harbor Freight. So uh, hopefully that stuff helps you guys. I don't even know how long this video is. Jesus Christ, 45 minutes. All right, guys, my apologies. 
Um, hopefully that's everything. If anyone has any comments, let me know. If you need another video, let me know. Uh, with that being said, we're going to get up out of here and uh, move on with our day. Maybe we'll talk a little bit of skip here after a while, or uh, we'll see what's going on. Maybe I'll watch some TV. Uh, but y'all didn't uh, get on here to hear me talk about all that. So, everyone, hope this was very educational, very helpful. Um, there again, questions or comments, let me know. And uh, I'll help you out all any way I can. Uh, enjoy the video. Sorry it's so long, but I felt it important to cover everything. Hopefully it was straightforward to the point. I just wanted to reiterate a few things because some people, oh, well, that flux costs an extra $4. I don't need that. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Quality matters. If you're having trouble soldering, quality matters. So with that being said, everyone, have a good day, a good week, good weekend. Uh, enjoy it. Tin Man up here in Wisconsin. We out. I see you, boy.